Hello and welcome to another Duck Fizzle System 1 video. Today I'm doing a new news video. Um, it feels like I haven't done one of these in quite a while. Um, it's the 7th of May um, 2022. I still can't get over that it's 2022. I feel like I probably said that about 2021 and then 2020 as well. Um, but yeah, I it's been free comic book day. I can't remember if I even just said that. Um, that's why all this mess is here, and uh, yeah, I'm just going to go over it and uh, go over what I got in terms of the free comics and what I, um, what uh, is for who, and just a little brief overview of stuff, really. Um, yeah, it's just new news, these particular new news videos are basically like collection update videos, or just, yeah, sort of thing, I guess. Uh, if you're new to the channel and you were just like, what the fuck is a new news? What is this person think is the news channel? Far from it. Um, but yeah, I'll go over some of the Lego stuff I bought today over in Leeds. Um, uh, my mum really wanted one of these Lego minifigures. Um, so I got one, because uh, that's how that works. Um, which is fair enough, um, considering how much my mum does for me. I think it's the least I could do, and uh, yeah, um, I think one of the staff was saying that there's only like three of the characters were left in the mystery bags, which is a bit unfortunate, which may explain why I went to, and to be fair, my support worker person that I was with was very adamant on me making some minifigs, so I did that. Um, one of these will be going to my brother, I don't think this one will, because this one's just psychotic. And I love the fact that he's psychotic, so he's um, a clown Lego brick with a pirate hat. And when the film, uh, when the film, when the video has finished, even I will definitely be giving him this guy's sword. Um, yeah, this guy is in little shorts and he's wearing a flowery shirt, but then has a monocle and a beard and a sword and this sort of hat. Yeah. I don't know how to make minifigures. Um, and then you've got the most flamboyant uh, bowling alley guy who is, uh, yeah, flamboyant and all probably, you know, gay, which I'm fine with. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> you prejudiced asshole. Um, Lego, 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 Lego. I also got the this little taxi cab because uh, I remember seeing it there last time and being like, that would be such a fun relatively easy fun thing to build I think um so yeah I, I, I got myself this and uh yeah hopefully it is a simple and easy enough build and not something I want to tear my eyes out with um for the last thing from the lego shop that I got personally was a tub of uh lego um in a tub I'm surprised they didn't mention the you know reuse the thing and get 75p off thing today, um, although it was absolutely packed uh, today, so yeah, that's probably why. Um, Forbidden Planet, I got uh, two of the uh, Tomodachi doll things um, by Bandai. Um, I've already got one of these because they were selling them in a shop in here in the UK called The Entertainer, I think. Um, so I already have one which is called Flick, um, who's the guy in Animal Crossing New Horizons who cut, you give him your books, but I really wanted this one because Chrissy is just like, you know, a fucking adorable character who I love, and uh, yeah, um, uh, Chrissy and there's another animal that I really like that both of them are right next to each other in the game. Uh, live near each other even should I say and uh, yeah I I think I will open this one but hopefully I'm gonna I know this sounds a bit stupid to do this but they're so small that if you put them in a place where there's a lot of dust which I did with Flick then you know where I'm going with this they collect a lot of dust and a lot of cack and a lot of you know because it's made of these the heads and the sometimes the feet and the, even the arms of these little felt like material which is great but then if you put them anywhere that has any, any, and I mean like just like one speck of dirt, then the, the dirt will just go, I'm not going to be on the floor now, I'm going to be on this thing and live here forever. And uh, yeah, 
very annoying. So as I say, I might just put this in a drawer, open it out of the box, but as I say, put it in a drawer, maybe. Um, that way that doesn't happen again, hopefully. And then I also got a, a Raymond, who hopefully is the right one that I think my mum really, really likes, which hopefully as well, I just remembered, hopefully she doesn't already have this one, because I will be a bit pissed if she does already have this one, because I feel like my mum ordered three, one for me, one for her, and one for my brother, and I can't for the life of me remember which one she got um, for herself, so yeah, I'm a bit worried, although she does still have a minifigure to open up, so there's at least one thing for my mum here um, that is hopefully definitely something she actually wants and won't be pissed that I got her. A duplicate because then I mean I guess I could then give this one to my brother if there is if there is a duplication uh, nation across the land words um from Forbidden Planet as well I bought this um and I can't believe I spent this much money on something this tiny very annoying but it is part of the actual black series it's official there's probably lots of scalpery versions for like five to like th three quid, maybe a pound or something on eBay, even maybe a fiver, as I say, that are just like really weird, you know, the mould and the print and the other bits and pieces are all just all over the place and just, it might not even be in scale, it might be, you know, his heads might be down there and or, or whatever, like wherever my, my disgusting finger is or, or thumb is right now, you know. Um, and then not come with any of the accessories. And usually you can tell if a black series is miss, <clears throat> uh, miss, uh, is, is a fake. That it's because the, the misprint, the Star Wars thing or the black series, the, the letters on the thing is, is wrong. But yeah, um, yeah, I just, I just thought I'd pick this up because I wasn't too sure what to get from the black series from Forbidden Planet because they had quite a lot. I was considering getting Muddy Mando, um... But he was like thirty nine ninety nine, and I was just like, that is a lot. But he is a deluxe figure, so that's why there's that price. Um, but I already have Mando in his non Beskar armor and his Beskar armor, so I was just like, do I really need a third one? Um, they had Phoenix Shand for twenty four ninety nine, so I was umming and ahhing about getting her. Um, but yeah, I I didn't know what to do really, and then there was a new there was. A New Hope layer, there was a New Hope layer as well as Return of the Jedi layer and some other figures, a character from um, Empire, uh, A New Hope as well as the Stormtrooper from like Rogue One, I think. But in the end, I got the layer from Return of the Jedi. Um, probably not my favourite film of the original trilogy. I do like it, of course, but yeah, I, I think I bought this one because I like the idea of Princess Leia actually being a bit more of an action hero rather than just the Princess Leia in the white robe, you know? That one's probably more iconic, but I like this sort of idea of a variant, of an action hero variant. And it's cool that the sort of camo stuff is soft goods, you know, it's not just one plastic thing. And I think if you pose her in a certain way, you can get the soft goods off her and remove the helmet and then you've kind of got like almost two in one figures and it was one of the f few um uh of the cheapest uh um black series action figure that I could find in the shop well besides him but even he he's not cheap for what he is i don't think personally um okay comics i got in leads i got this graphic novel which as i was saying at my support of every person i um <clears throat> Read some of it when uh, uh, Geek Retreat in the city that I live in um, first opened. They had a free graphic novel reading section thing, bookshelf, and I picked this up because I was a massive fan of Teen Titans, the animated series, when I was a kid growing up. Me and my brother loved watching it. So, um, yeah, I like the artwork and stuff. And it's, yeah, it was it was a good read from what I read up to. And what I did read then, uh, which was like what back in latter end October November twenty nineteen, I feel like. Um, the only thing, spoiler alert, unfortunately, Doctor Who related, I got this free comic book day and time was 
the latest issue, or at least I think it's the latest issue, of Doctor Who magazine. Um, yeah, issue 577. Um, I picked this one up mainly because there's been a lot of talk about the Chris Chibnall interview thing. And he, and I'm fascinated by it because he doesn't often talk about Doctor Who, which is fair enough. I mean, I think there's a <clears throat> thing in a previous, uh, ooh, comic strip. I didn't know they had that back now. Um, there was a previous thing in one of the Doctor Who magazines. Just take that out and put that in the bin. Um, in one of the previous Doctor Who magazines that said the re one of the reasons why you don't do the interview things is is because um, as the head writer slash showrunner, he doesn't feel like he has much else to contribute that his predecessors haven't already said. You know, the likes of Russell T. Davis and Stephen Moffat about, you know, what it's like to showrun Doctor Who. So... In that sense, that's a valid enough thing to say. Or in that sense, I can kind of see why he hasn't been as vocal as they have or were even when they were um, the showrunners of the show. Um, but yeah, I think I think um, this might have like uh, someone interviewing him about like series eleven and then twelve and then what. Well, was thirteen series thirteen, and then how it pivoted and changed, or had to change to be flux and whatnot. And uh, yeah, it's uh, interesting. I, I I like the cover. The cover's very nice. It's pretty catching. It's nice to see Jodie on there because I remember a while back there was an issue of Doctor Who magazine that had like Hartnell with lots of flames on the front of it, and people were bitching like, "Oh, see, this is why Doctor Who's terrible now because Jodie Wick is barely even in Doctor Who or oh, on the front cover of Doctor Who magazine. They don't even even the magazine don't consider her canon and blah 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 and all this bullshit." And I was just like, "Shut the fuck up! Do these people ever just stop talking or yelling about stupid bullshit that don't matter?" Because the thing that I was going to say is that, like, the way I see it is I like the fact that they've got a shard and the Kablam Man because I'd say they're two of the, the strongest baddies or, or things from the Chibnall era that I like, um, in terms of monsters anyway. I mean, yeah, if you've got any suggestions for Doctor Who related videos, please, that you want me to do in the future, please feel free to comment down below. Um, you know, because that could be one, you know, my top five or top three, um, four or, or, I don't know, top six, top four, um, favourite, you know, Doctor Who baddies or big bad, or, or characters, or Doctor Who characters from the Chibnall era, you know, top, top six characters from the Chibnall era, or strengths of the Chibnall era, or something like that, I don't know, I mean, yeah. As for, finally, uh, the actual three comics, I got... A Batman one from Travelling Man, that was the last thing they had there. These ones were from OK Comics. OK Comics was also the first place we went to as well. Still from OK Comics. Yeah, OK Comics had, as you can see, the most of the freebies. Um, and then this one was the only one from Forbidden Planet. So one from Forbidden Planet, one from Travelling Man, and then like pretty much the bulk was from uh, OK Comics. So yeah, um, bit annoyed in that sense. Uh, the top three like sort of comics that I, that were free that I really wanted to get this year were um, the Doctor Who one, of course. Um, with Joe Martin on the front uh, as the Fugitive Doctor, the Stranger Things one, and Avatar The Last Airbender, um, you know, because I've just literally started, or a bit ago, I'd started watching Avatar The Last Airbender on Netflix, and I was like, God, it'd be so cool to get that as a as a freebie. Um, and then I didn't get any of them, sad face. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess out of the free ones, the ones that I like the most of, the look over actually the kitty ones to be honest some of the yeah there, there we go that's my reading level in terms of my mental age clearly um but yeah i mean free is free right you know you can't complain too much although i just have earlier uh but yeah hopefully my local comic shop might have kept the doctor who one aside for me because he knows how much of a massive doctor who nerd i am and also maybe the other two that i just mentioned they were the three, the, the Doctor Who, the Avatar The Last Airbender slash Korra comic, and the um, Stranger Things one. 
were the top three that I really wanted. Because the thing is with Strange Things, I just started watching that at uh, the beginning of the pandemic, you know, back in like April, May um, 2020. So yeah, like two years ago now, uh, which is crazy to think. I started watching the first series of Stranger Things and then just all went by episode by episode and caught up to season three. And I'm actually quite excited to see where series season four goes but it's kind of funny because by the time i've started watching it now no one ever even really talks about strange things when back when it was like season one and two like no one had shut up about it which was annoying because i didn't have any interest in watching it back then and then the last thing is just this catalog for lego really which i'll just put upstairs and give to my mum that so she can spend all of her money on lego uh and drive my dad insane uh but yeah Thanks for watching. Please do comment, rate and subscribe to the channel.